Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a brilliant attacking game played by the 8th world chess champion Mikhail Tal. His opponent is Soviet chess grandmaster Yuri Balashov and the game was played in 1987 in Moscow with a rapid time control. But before starting our game make sure that you are subscribed in order not to miss my future uploads. I have to tell you that I came across this game on Douglas Griffin's Twitter account and now we can enjoy this little known beauty together. Mikhail Tal who was playing with white pieces opened up with e4 and Balashov responded with Sicilian defense c5, knight f3 e6, knight c3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, a6, black is going for time on of variation, a6 is not the most popular move usually in here, black is playing queen c7, but in our game we have a6, to will Tal responded with knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop d3, d6, well d5 is a more active and popular continuation, but in our game we have d6, white castles kingside, knight f6, f4, bishop e7, queen e2, knight d7, e5, knight c5, e takes d6, queen takes d6, bishop c4, black castles kingside, nothing special, both players are centralizing their pieces, putting them on more active squares, the dark squared bishop in typical positions can play a very important role, and can put a very useful pressure on black's king side. Already at this point, white wants to play queen g4, that's why black played knight d7 in order to meet queen g4 with bishop f6. In our game, after knight d7, Tal played knight e4 and c5, bishop c3, knight b6, and rook f3. Now, this is a very cunning move, and black has to be very careful. If black plays, for example, knight takes c4, then black can step into this powerful bishop takes g7 sacrifice. The idea is that if king takes g7, then rook g3 check, and if king h8, then queen g4. And if bishop g5, in order to open up the 7th rank, then simply f takes g5. This is a better continuation, which is maintaining better attacking chances. Later white can play rook h3 or knight f6, and I have to tell you that recapturing with the queen is not very good because black can fight back by playing f5. Let's go back, that's why after rook f3, instead of capturing on c4, black neutralized the dark squared bishop by playing f6. And now already as the pawn is on f6, this dark squared bishop is somehow neutralized, Tal played bishop a5, at any moment he can exchange the dark squared bishop with a knight and he wants to keep alive his light squared bishop, king h8, knight c3, right now the threat is knight a4, that's why black unpinned his knight and we have bishop takes b6, queen takes b6, rook e1, white is intensifying the pressure on e6 and bishop d6, by the way I have to tell you that Capturing on b2 is not good because of this rook b1 and if queen a3 then knight d5 and black is losing. That's why after rook e1 we have bishop d6. The idea is that now if bishop takes e6 then black has this rook e8 move. If f5 then after bishop takes e6, f takes e6, black can play bishop e5, block the e file and then win this pawn. That's why after bishop d6 Tal played rook h3. He's looking for attacking chances and right now he created a devastating rook takes h7 threat. Overlooking Tal's threat, black played f5 but this is tapping into a devastating combination. Instead it was better either to play rook a7, in some lines the rook can be very useful on the 7th rank or g6, but in our game we have f5 and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find the mating line for white. I have to tell you that at this point the engine shows checkmate in 6. Ready? Uh, the winning combination starts with rook takes h7. All black could do was to accept the rook sacrifice, after which we have queen h5 check, king g8, and another powerful move, rook takes e6. Yes, guys, Tal is sacrificing his second rook, and in this case he is keeping alive his light squared bishop. Yes, it turns out that in this position the bishop is stronger and more useful than the rook. 
Of course, bishop takes e6, won't give white anything, in that case white can even lose. That's why we have rook takes e6, and now the threat is, for example, rook e8, check. Black played queen before a desperate attempt, but let's take a look what if, for example, bishop takes e6, and this bishop takes e6, check is coming, and then black king is getting checkmated very quickly. In our game, after rook takes e6, we have a desperate queen before move, black is attacking the white bishop, but after Tal's powerful rook h6 check, black resigned. Now, if you win this bishop, then this time rook h8 checkmate is coming, that's why understanding that his position is hopeless and his king is in a mating net after Rook h6 check black resigned. But this is a truly a brilliant rook maneuver, right guys? First white went for a rook sacrifice on h7 and then rook takes e6, rook h6, rook h8. A brilliant attack by the legend Mikhail Tal. Well, in the end let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to find the winning line for black. I have to tell you that this position is also taken from a game played by Mikhail Tal and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.